Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, power and glory, TV and media land. Glory to God. I thank you, praise God, for your patience. Amen. As we are getting ready to, amen, get started tonight on the teaching. We thank you, praise God. Amen. We've been teaching on giving for the last few weeks. And tonight we're going to um, do one more teaching on giving. Tonight we're going to teach a lesson on uh, just being a cheerful giver. Amen. How it's important to be happy in your giving. Glory to God. But before I get started tonight and before we pray, well, let me pray and then um, uh, we address a few things. Father, we thank you tonight. In the name of Jesus, have your way as always, Holy Spirit. God, speak through us. God, use it for your glory. Yes. Bless the ears that we hear what the Spirit have to say tonight. Increase their faith. Increase us. Heal our bodies, God. Touch us. And we pray for the president. And God, we pray for everyone yes. that's in authority and that's up under the president. My God. You bless our country and our nation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Before I get started on teaching on a cheerful giver, um, there has been, been some alarming things that's going on in the body of Christ that um, is real alarming. Uh-huh. And the weak and the feeble, even though they wouldn't consider themselves to be that, they are going to stray after every wind of doctrine and strange doctrine. Praise God. People don't understand that Christianity has been always been fought. And for you that thought Christianity is a man-made religion, I don't know how you come up with that because it was in the book of Acts where they first was named Christians. And, and they was named Christians after Peter was praying for those to be filled with the baptism of the Holy. And anybody know their biblical studies or their theologian studies, you know that Peter was very prejudiced. <laughs> he was prejudiced against the Gentiles. He didn't yes, he care was. for yes. pagans coming into his Jewish religion, which now he got the true Messiah. So someone might need to Restudy and re relearn their theology on how it came about. So um, there's some strange stuff that's going on out here, and um, I just want to be a good shepherd to the people that God has allowed Pastor Sherry Broomfield and myself to be overseer over um, to correct um, some of this weird doctrine and teachings. Yes. That um, uh, since saints don't like to study for themselves, and and um, and then some of them are babies, so you can't expect you know your babies to feed themselves. Well, let me say it like this: I right. I had the privilege of I had thirteen, twelve or thirteen grandchildren. Which one I had, honey? I think I got twelve grandchildren, yes. and um, I had them from five months. All the way up till um, 17 years old. Amen. So um, I, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to yes. kids. Well, I expect the 17 year old to feed herself, and I expect the 12 year old, that'll be 13 this year, to feed himself. Yes. And I expect the 10 year old, the 11 year old, the 6 year old, and the 8 year old, and the 7 year old, and the 5 year old to feed themselves. But yeah. I would be wrong to expect the five-month-old to feed herself. Yeah. And I, I can't tell her when she's crying, get up and go fix your bottle. Right. And, and go on in there and get your bottle. You know where your right. milk is at? And put the milk in the formula together. Well, that's our job as parents to feed the child that is in your care. Well, so it is power and glory. And to anyone who will hear it, before we get into our teaching, um, there's some things that I'm going to make sure don't get in your formula and deform well, you. My God. Oh, I wish I had three people that would have church tonight. 
Okay. And I want to make sure stuff don't get in your formula. And if it's it, it's, if it is in your formula, I want to make sure that it get uh, strained out. Praise God. Okay. And and you know, it's, we're not going to teach our opinion. And you know, for you that like to talk like that, that's just a, no. I don't have I have opinions because opinion is like what everybody in the world have. Your opinion is like your backside. Right. And then everybody have one. Mm -hmm. You know, you sit on your backside. Uh -huh. That's what an opinion is. Everybody have yes. one. But I'm gonna tell you the danger of the backside. If you don't wash it, you you get you get the message. Mm -hmm. You get the message, don't right. you? If right. you don't wash it. Yeah, you understand. So I want to get rid of the odor that is trying to um, um, crowd the minds of those who God has caused Pastor Sherry and I to be overseer over and get rid of some of this erroneous teaching and doctrines. And the word doctrine, it just means strong teaching. Right. That's all it means. You know, I'm going to get rid of some of the dogma that has been trying to be infiltrated. And, 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 and how you do is line up on line and precept on precept. And here a little and there a little. Praise God. And we're going to do it through the word of God, not yes, our backsides. You know, yes. not our opinion, not man's thoughts, not that's his opinion, that's what he think. None of that. No. Of that. We're going to go with the word of God. We yes. want what the Lord says because Satan, yes, there you go. The devil don't respect no one's backsides. The devil don't respect what you said on. The devil only respects the word of God. That's right. That's why Jesus quoted that it was written. He quoted the word. The word it was written from the Greek. Yes, you got to use Greek for you. That's talking about Greek. It's it's it's, it's not right to you. Yeah, it is because you have to use the Greek. You you got to because God permitted and. It's just so much stuff that got to be corrected. Uh -huh. That, yes. that that's out here. This dogma that have to be corrected. Praise God, so that the people can can grow and get stronger. Because what Satan wants to do, he wants to water down your opportunity to yes. be able to bench press him out of your life. Well, yeah, the devil don't want you to be able to bench press him out of your life. You Come see, on. glory to God. Some on the that don't know me. I'm, I'm a big man, and for uh -huh. you that don't know me, you might say, oh, man, he's big. Or for you that's sarcastic, you might say, he's fat. Uh -huh. But in all truth, my size, a lot of it had to do with my bench press life. Right. When I bench pressed and when I was when I was a power lifter okay. in my earlier days, you know, okay? Mm -hmm. And so because I did it for so many years, so a lot of the muscle mass has not gone away. No, and some of it, you know, I can stand. <laughs> you understand? I can stand to be blessed. You understand? And that's but, all right. But, um, yes. but the point I'm getting at is that I want to help you. The all I want to say tonight, I just want to help you. Power and glory. I want to help you. Starting, praise God, next week. Next week is going to be a powerful week. It's going to be the start of. Praise God, a teaching that has filtrated and begin to mess up a lot of the minds of God's people. Yes. It's a teaching that is necessary, amen, for the believers. So I'm, I'm going to behoove you. You might even want to squeeze in on Sunday, praise God, because I might start it on this Sunday. Amen. But I do know for a fact it will definitely be started next Wednesday. I have a whole new teaching. You won't want to tell you. I promise you. If you don't Definitely. tune in, when you hear the sound thereof, you're going to want to watch the next week coming. Or you want to watch that because we have to get rid of what is making us weak, what's yeah. making us sick, uh -huh. and what's even causing some of us to die. And causing some of us to lose our fire, our cell. Mm -hmm. And renouncing the very only thing that you got. There's no other name under heaven given my word. Man, it must be saying that's the name of Jesus. No Glory other. to God. I don't even want to call him some other name. Uh -huh. Glory to God. And I, and, and I don't want to really get into that because we're on YouTube now. Because I, I can mess with the other names. 
And, and first of all, you being American, it's hard for you to mess on those names because those names that you try to use, glory to God, if you don't have culture use, if you don't have culture bringing, you still do the name injustice. My God. Yes. God. You got to have culture with those names. Yes. You got to have a culture about yourself. Mm -hmm. Not something that you wake up and you feel like you found something. That's why that's why Christianity is still the name that that's why everybody fight Christianity. Because Christ sanctioned it with his death. That's why Christianity, Christians, Christ yes. left Antioch, the, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. So right. in that book of the Acts of the Holy Spirit, that's where you first started seeing Christian. Those who act like Christ. And who in that chapter that you see the first time it's mentioned. It's Peter the Apostle himself. Come right. On, everybody, Come get on. in your Bible and quit listening. We'll, 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 we'll work with some stuff. We'll talk about some stuff. Yes. Amen. Because I am not, I, one thing I won't do is try to form anything, but I want to put back the strength of what has been trying to become weak. Lord. Glory to God. The Bible yes, told sir. you and I, if we add to this book, then plagues will be added to this, to our lives. The Lord, Bible told you and I, if we take away from this book, then our name will be taken from the book of life. And I'm not trying to do neither one. Yes. I can't afford another plague in my life or well, one at all. Right. And I cannot afford my name to be taken. So tonight, everybody, let's wrap up our, and you will hear me in different times continue to talk about giving throughout the rest of this year because it's important that we understand about giving. Not only is it giving our money, but giving ourselves to the Lord. Yes, yes. Glory to God. God prefer you give yourself to him above money. The reason why is because you give yourself to the Lord, your money is going to be easy. Glory okay. to God. So we don't want to talk about you giving money. We yes, want to talk yes. about you giving yourself. So tune in and stay tuned in. Glory to God. We just want to help you. If yes. nobody else, I just want to help power and glory. Glory to God. I want to help you. So that you will have power to resist the devil. And you will have power to rebuke him when he comes to visit you in the night season. Amen? amen. Glory to God. Well, let's get here. Uh, 2 Corinthians, amen. Uh -huh. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh -huh. verses 6 and 7. Okay. It's where we're going to take our, um, our lesson from. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. It reads, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Yeah. And he that and he which soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Verse seven. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly uh -huh. or of necessity, okay. for God loveth a cheerful giver. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. God loves a person who's have a heart like he has when it comes to giving. The Bible decrees and declares to us the ultimate giving. That for God so loved the world that he gave his yes. only begotten son. And watch what he put in that. He said, for God so loved yes. the world yes. that he gave, look what he, look what he did, his only begotten son. But look what God deposited in that. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. God deposit in his gift of giving that you believe on his son Jesus. You. you will not perish. The word yes. perish from the Greek, it means to be snatched out of sight. So the Bible says to you and I that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish 
but have everlasting life. It's important that we fall in love with giving. Amen. Glory to God. I know we has been abused. I know we have been taken. I know church, amen, and some of you church hurt on giving, you have given and pain has happened and false things have been told you. But well, what you need to do is find in yourself to forgive the ones who lied to you and forgive the ones who perpetrated Jesus and perpetrated his word that brought hurt and pain to you to, to the point that you no longer want to give. You don't want the soul. You don't want to pay your tithes. You don't have nothing to do with that part. Every time you hear the word giving from a preacher, it makes you angry. Every time you hear giving, you think about, oh, what are you going to do with it? He's a thief. I want to see. When all those things rise up in you, it's because you've been hurt by it. Right. Something has hurted you. Something has offended you. The Bible told you and I that offenses will come. But woe to the one who brings them. Bring them. Yes. So it's encouraged. I encourage you tonight that you get healed of every disappointment that you have had in your life when it comes to giving. Because if God was hurt in giving, then at what point will we be cut off? From having his son to forgive us of our sins. My God. What if God became disappointed with earth and with mankind. And because they are rejecting his son Jesus. And they are rejecting the very gift that God has given for life. What if God cut off what's in Christ to, to the power to forgive. And the power to heal and to deliver. My he God. said now I gave you my son Jesus. He can cast out devils. He can heal you from any sickness. He can heal you from any disease. He can raise the dead. He got miraculous power. He worked wonders. What if God reached in and said, I'm cutting this off because I'm hurt. I'm offended that I have extended my son for over 2,000 years and they have just totally disregarded him for the ones who have him. Amen. But I'm, from this point forward, nobody else is coming into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how would you feel about that? Now that you got a son out there or daughter or a husband or a wife or auntie or grandmother or yeah. someone that you love and you praying for God to save them and for God to deliver them and for God to bring them out. But you yet hurt and offended by giving. Mm. Oh, God, I wish I had a church right now. See, you have to weigh it in the balance and see where the trickery of Satan is at. Yeah. How the devil try to come in and trick you mm -hmm. and get you off beat, off course from obeying the scripture. The Bible said, he said, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. And this is another thing. Yeah. You can't keep coming to church and giving two nickels. You got, you got $500 in your pocket. But because you were offended, you keep giving nickels in the in the basket. I ain't giving nobody this. I ain't, I ain't giving nobody no, none of my money. I'm not talking about the widow with the two mites. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the woman who gave more than them all because she gave all what she had. They got they gave out of their prosperity, yes, yes. but she gave out of all what she had. Mm. I'm not talking about the alabaster box. Praise God. Okay. The woman that broke all a year's work salary. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The mystery of the alabaster box was that it had ointment. It had fragrance in it. But when you got it, you had no way of seeing how it got in. I'm well, not talking about the mystery of giving. But I'm talking about, praise God, that you know that God is tucking at you to come out of that hurt. To come out of that disappointment. Praise God yes. to come out of that and and you I ain't giving, but then you want everything back. You yes. saw a toothpick, but you want a treat back. It don't yeah. work like that. <laughs> Glory to God. You can't get a toothpick, amen, a little wood peg that cleans your teeth out when you eat meat or apple. Uh -huh. Glory to God. And you can't sew a toothpick and talk about I deserve to have that treat. No. If you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. Right. And the Bible said, 
He which so bountifully shall reap bountifully. Glory yes. to God. Now watch this. Look at, look, at, look at the story. Glory to God. They sold out of their riches. Glory yes. to God. But she sold out of all what she had. And her name is mentioned. She is mentioned in all of the gospels. But they are not. You wow. see, because she sold bountifully. Glory yes. to God. It's important that you understand that God loves a cheerful giver. That's right. Not someone that's given out a grudge. Mm -hmm. Not that you're given because, of, well, this is what I'm going to do it. And, and don't give out of obligation. Glory to God. God wants you to give with him in mind. God wants you to give with him in, in purpose, you know, with him in, yeah. in, with, at, at the forefront of you. When it comes time to give, God wants you to be thinking about him. That's right. Not thinking about what the preacher going to get. Not thinking about how much money the church going to have. No, 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 no. That's not your thinking. That's not your responsibility. You need to know, glory to God, that I'm giving unto the Lord. My seed is unto God. I'm sowing to God. I'm giving to God. I'm coming. I heard you on there. I'm coming about you giving yourself here in a minute. Oh, right, I hope you're ready right. for you that's thinking that. I hope you're ready for when I come that way. I'll be there in a few minutes. Glory about you giving yourself. I hope you're ready to give yourself, okay? Glory to God. Why you sing again myself away? I hope you're ready for that song. Amen. Some of like some of we like singing songs, but it sounds good. But I want to give you obey what we sing. Come on, somebody. Okay, get back on teaching. Get back on giving. Get back on giving. But God wants you to give out a out of a cheerful heart. Yeah. Not grudge it. God don't want you feeling obligated. He don't want you to give out of grudge and anger and shoot. I ain't giving them. I ain't giving them all my money. He don't want you doing that. And then he don't want you to give it out of necessity. You know, one of the words out of necessity, it means to, to have an argument. Wow. That's one of the words now. So if you're going into Greek, you're going to see many of them. But one of the Greek words is argument. God said, don't give grudgingly or out of an argument. Don't, don't be arguing. I'm, I'm giving that. Don't. God said, keep that. You yeah. keep that. You keep your necessity. You keep your grudge. He said, but I just want from you what you want to give to me cheerfully. My God goodness. said, the Bible said, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. God wants you to give happy. Be happy. The teaching that I've done for the last four weeks or so, glory to God, how to give to a king. God wants you to give happily. He wants yeah. you to be happy when you come to him. Look forward to giving. Can't wait till it come time to give. I can't wait come time to pay my time. I can't wait to come time to give. I can't wait to sow to my man of God, my woman of God. I can't wait to bless the poor. I right. can't wait, glory to God, to help that struggling mother. I can't wait till the Holy Spirit show me that that person is hungry and need, or that person need a coat or a pair of shoes or, or a hat or a glove. I can't wait to God show me, glory yes. to God, where he need me to be a giver at. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. See, it's important that you give. Giving is part of the Christian way. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. It's a giver. Glory to God. And then if you've got another scripture, let's go to the book of Acts, everybody. Uh -huh. Glory to God. Acts, I'm almost done. I'm, you know me. I'm not a, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't be on here long. Glory to God, not long. I mean, some of you might want me to be on the long, but it keep you coming back when you know I ain't on here long. Okay. Amen. And I want to go right to the point. Praise God. Um, um, Acts 20 and verse 35. Glory to God. And I want to go to that last clause of there. If you got one of good Bible, it's in red. <laughs> if you got a good Bible, it's in the red. And I want to go to that part right there and say, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is constantly talking about glory to God, how God do things. Notice what it said. 
And he said in this chapter, he said, the words of our Lord Jesus, the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Yeah. Now, now I'm going to just touch on something because God is the one who created everything. God is the one that made everything. So God being a male factor, everything on the male is point to give. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. A male gives. Glory to God. Right. A woman don't give a man a child. The man gives the woman a child. His Amen. seed goes into what are receiving. The woman receives the seed that is released that has been given by the man. Everything that's on the man is pointed to give. Glory to God. And God wants you to understand that giving is of him. For God so loved the word that he gave. God is a giver. Glory to God. And that's what he wants you to do is to be a, a giver. Now to answer your question. The Bible tells you and I to present your body as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Glory to God. This is giving, present, present, presentation. All of this is giving. Present. Yeah. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. God wants you to give yourself to him. But he wants you to give yourself to him as a living sacrifice, not dead. Okay. <laughs> he don't want you dead. Because the Bible said the dead can talk no more. Oh David said the dead cannot oh speak God. no more. Oh For you have spoken all you can speak when you're dead. As a tree falls, so shall it lie. You can't talk when you're dead, but you got life you can talk. So present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable servant. Now that's a trick right there. A good trick because you only way you can be present yourself holy is that you got to receive the Holy One. My Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. You and I have no ability to be holy. The Bible told you and I, while we was yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Yes, so there did. was nothing holy about us. Glory to God. Only way you can be holy is that you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy One. So yeah, once you have received the Holy One, then take what is on the inside that has now made you presentable. They got that? Presentable. Now you present yourself unto Him, holy unto God, which is your reasonable service. Glory to God. So yes, God wants you to give yourself because giving you is more important than any dime, any nickel, Anything you can give to the poor, anything you can give to a man or a woman, right. like it lights, water, gas on, glory to God, you got to give yourself. Glory to God. So it's important that we give. So God loves a cheerful giver. The Bible tells us right here in the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 35, and the words of Jesus, how it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Glory to God. Look for an opportunity to be a blessing. Look for an opportunity. I know the enemy has worked on the body of Christ with fear, with doubt, and with all the other things that makes us uh, afraid yes. and even have a um, drawback when it comes to uh, giving ourselves to the Lord or giving to God. But the Bible right. tells us, watch this, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, and verse 33. It said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. That's right. Now, ain't that something? Now, notice now, he said added to you. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say multiply. Right. Glory to God. He <laughs> said, as you seek the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, all these things going to be added. God going to start taking one thing after the next, one by one, adding them. Not multiplying it to you, okay? but he's going to add it to you. Little by little will he add it to you. 
The Bible tells you and I, but, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. God wants to add to you. God wants to multiply you. Yes. God wants you to have more than enough. He wants you to have an abundance. He wants you to have good measure, yes. pressed down, shaken together, mm -hmm. running over, that men will give into your bosom. It's important that you and I will give. Give ourselves to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Give ourselves to the Lord. Yes. Seek to bless the poor. Notice what happened when John the Baptist got captured for correcting the matter with the king. And even before the king could even kill John the Baptist, glory to God, the men came. And he said, go to my, go to Jesus and ask him, is he the one or do we seek for another? The first thing Jesus said, go tell John that the poor have received the gospel. Yes. Ain't that amazing? Now, you got to understand that they weren't just poor receiving the gospel. In other words, they, they weren't hungry and he just preaching to them. They were starving mm -hmm. and he just preaching to them. Right. No, Jesus fed the hungry. He fed, he did it for the poor. So the first thing he told John, he said, oh, tell John that the poor has received the good news. Yes. So that's part of giving. Glory to God. Seek opportunity. Yes, it Job. Is. One of the confusions of Job was that when Job got down around about the 29th and the 30th chapter, by that time he's been so accused and he's been so rebuked by uh, his three so-called friends. And, and Job began to testify about who he was before, amen, the affliction came. Job talked about how the young man sought him out and how those that was in the street waited for him and how he took care of the poor. Glory to God. Job talked about how he fed the poor and glory to God, everything, even the rocks were like butter to him. My everything God, that he touched God. was blessed because he said, but now things have changed. And this, let me tell you something. When things change in our lives, don't change about just, don't change about giving. See, Job, you see, Job starts off with great sacrifice and giving, 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 giving to God. Yes. Only time Job was not giving to God when everything was taken from him to give to God. Yes. Oh, God, that's right. good. Glory to God. Everything was taken. Now he's on the he's on the backside of the desert, scratching himself with the with the potters that yes. that start the itching the boils has got up on his skin and the maggots was eating out the rotted areas because of what has happened to him. I That's the it. only reason why he wasn't, glory to God, giving and making sacrifice. And then when God finally came after so long a time, y'all know the story, you know, you, you, you know the story. When his skin came up only like baby's flesh and when he prayed for his friends and got them blessed for, for false accusations, Glory to God. Job went right back to giving, right back to sacrificing, right back to sowing. And God did what? Gave him all back what was lost. Yes. Glory to God. God gave him back his children back. Watch them. Now you said now, he got everything back double, but he didn't get double kids. Uh-oh, wait. Watch this. The Bible okay. never let you just call it something wrong. He got double everything. Double cattle, double everything back, right? right. Now... He had 10 children, correct? All right. dead, right? Mm -hmm. He get 10 more children, correct? Well, he only get 10, right? And he don't get 20, right? Okay. But look what happened. His three daughters married kings. Uh-oh. Come on now. Wow. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. So his three daughters married kings. And look what comes out of that. So Job, the Bible says, dies as the richest man in all the East, even though his daughters and marry those kings. That is all about giving, everybody. Yes, when you give is. yourself, yes, when you constantly is. give yourself, power and glory, yes. media, land, I want to encourage you to give more than just your tithes and your offering. If you're struggling in paying your tithes, it's because you're struggling in giving yourself to the Lord. Oh, if you're yeah. struggling in paying your tithes, you're, 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 you're having to watch this. You're either offended 
Let me help you tonight. You might be offended. Uh, you're struggling paying your tithes and giving God what is here. Either you're offended or you have some false teaching that's put down in you. Or, uh, or watch this, or you having a trust issue. You have been so poor for so long and now you don't know how to give and trust. So you're having issues. Glory to God. So you, you, you're having issues with the word of God to take him at his word. You see, and that's okay to have an issue when it comes to the word of God. But what it ain't okay is that when you see yourself drowning, that you don't reach your hand out for, for saving. Did you buy them? Yeah. Taking him at his word. Uh -huh. Jesus sent them off one night in prayer. And as he sent them off to prayer, there's a storm arose. And the storm was real tedious. And the disciples was in trouble and they cried out. But Jesus, they saw Jesus come walking on the water. But for fear, they thought it was a ghost. Mm -hmm. They cried out and said, Lord, is it you? Jesus told them it's him. Peter said, if it's you, then bid me come. Yeah. What 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 gave him? Now what now what's this? Now this is the first time. Oh, glory ah, to God. God. This is the first time they seen Jesus walk on water. What made him bid me come? What made what gave Peter the ability to ask him for something that he never saw him do? Mm -hmm. See, bid me come. You know why he said bid me come? First of all, Jesus is now about a half mile into the water with them. Right. So Jesus now is walking up on about 70, 75 feet of water. Oh, come on. Yeah, I was in Israel. I know the spot. I'm looking at it. It's the water about 75 feet deep right there. Okay. Okay. So now what's happening right now? What's happening right now is that Jesus is walking on it, but he's not, but he's not sinking. So he said, bid me come. So only for me to bid me come, Jesus is not continuing to walk. Jesus is standing still. So now right. Jesus is not only walking on the water, he's standing on it. Well. So he asked him, so Peter said, bid me to come. He said, come. So what made Peter walk on water? What made Peter walk on water was come. Yeah. He took him at his word. And that's what God wants you to do when it comes to giving. He wants you to take him at his word. Okay. Glory to God. Repent of the, of the anger, the disappointment. Forgive that man, that woman, that church, those people that had right, abused your right, mind. Right. Yes, you could be. Yes, yes, I know all about it too. Yes, I've been there and seen it. I know what I'm talking about. But forgive them so that you won't hold up your blessings. Right. Release the anger, the, the bitterness, and don't put every man in the same boat, every woman in the same boat. It's a pitiful thing. I want to speak to the women tonight. Yeah. Don't don't put all men in the same basket for that man that hurt you. Yeah. 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 God. I was in Walmart, praise God, a few years back, and um I was um in the line and and, and this woman was, was just going off in the line and and um and she had one of those dispositions um uh of take charge disposition and um you know one all men are the same <clears throat> and so she kept saying it and and she was starting to be offensive with it so I kind of moved to the side signifying I'm not the one that you're talking about see my gift is working now so she don't know the prophet was behind her. Well, so my gift is working. I see now. The Holy Spirit didn't already let me look into her, so I stepped to the side and see. Then she had the nerve to look at the prophet and said, "You, you know, I said I'm not him. I said I'm not. The, I'm not him. I have never slapped my wife. I have never cussed out my wife. I never slept, cheated on my wife. I never slept on the couch. So I don't know what you're talking about. Okay." Glory to God. I don't know what it is. So my wife don't have your testimony. So I, I'm not that man. So all right, men right, are not the right. same. So That's I'm right. going to help somebody tonight. And that go for you men too. Just because you broke your heart. Don't be going through all the women. Glory to God. I'm going I'm to I'm sleep around until I find the right one. No, you ain't going to never find the right one. You got too many soul ties. You can't find the right one. Come on. Get back to well, the teaching. Get good. back. Get back to giving. Come on. Yeah. Holy Ghost, thank you. Yeah. But um, so it's important that you again. 
that you give, that yeah. you give. And don't be bitter. Don't be argumentative. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Forgive them that hurt you. Yes, Forgive sir. that church that abused your money and took you that. This is good teaching. And you need, to, you need to release all of that so God can bless you. Yes, quit sir. being stingy. Quit having, quit having a pocket full of dollars and all you want to give God is sales. Well, but you, all you see is that preacher, that man. Uh -huh. Every preacher ain't buying Cadillacs and Lincolns with your money. Right. All preachers ain't pets. You're looking at one now. Everybody ain't spending church money and bills in. I heard some idiot, Lord Jesus, yes, some idiot say uh, the other day, so I heard, Lord. I heard um, uh, over there about power and glory, um, something going on with the money. You're an idiot. Ain't nothing going on with the money. We bought three churches and beautified every one of them. Glory to God. Amen. I'm like, nothing, Amen. nothing going on with them. Our lights have never been off. Our gas never been off. Amen. Glory to God. Ain't nobody pimping over there. Amen. Glory to God. Never did, never will. I got to go to heaven. Glory to God. So I heard something. What you heard about the money? Glory to God. <laughs> you are lying. The person that told it to you too. And Satan. So all three of y'all are lying. The devil is a liar. The one that said it. And you that believe it. All of you liars. Go Glory on. to God. He heard nothing. But what? Somebody wants you to say because you're bitter. Bitterness yes. will make you stop giving. Bitterness will make you stop sowing. Bitterness will make you criticize true men, true women of God. Bitterness yes. will stop making you believe in prophetic offerings. Bitterness will make you stop believing and giving your tithes and giving offerings. Bitterness. Yes. Bitterness. Get rid of it. Hebrews chapter 4. Read that if you're full of bitterness. Get rid of it. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 4, if you got bitterness, it won't allow you to enter in to the presence of God My because God. of bitterness. So forgive yourself. And you that don't have faith and, and don't got trust, glory to God, be like Peter. Say, nonetheless, I take you up the word. But I didn't finish the story. So when Peter began to walk on calm, watch this, the Bible said he began to look at the situation. He began to look at the water and how boisterous it was. And he began to sink. But in his sinking, he said something. He said, Lord, save me. The Bible said, and Jesus reached down, grabbed him, picked him up, and put him on the boat. So I'm trying to say to you, that is sinking. Feel like you're sinking and trusting and taking him at the word. At the point of your sinking, I need you to fall on your face before God and maybe accompany that thing with some fasting and say, God, save me. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Yes. I trust you, but help me to believe you and take you at your word right. so that I can stand and testify of your goodness that I can decree and declare that if you give, it shall be given back to you with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run over, shall men give into your bosom. Yes, God, sir. so I can say to and become friends with unrighteous mamma, yes. so that when I fall, it will pick me up. Yes, sir. God, help I, uh, me, yes, God. Sir. Don't go to nobody. Yes, don't go Lord. to another I, year uh, of criticism. Don't go to the dumb hypocrite over there. No, that's all they want. That's all they want. No, don't go there. If that's all they want, then you get from all they want. And go to what God wants. God wants you to give. And he wants you to give happily. He wants yes, you to be exactly. cheerful. He wants to be cheerful. And get out of all that. That's all preachers want. But they ain't, listen, that ain't what all preachers want. Money makes the world go around. Yes, it does. Finances help the church to move forward. Mm -hmm. Finances help anything move. If it's moving, if it got light, if you got lights, money. You got water, money. You got gas, money. You got yes. food, money. Yes. You got clothes, money. You got a phone, money. Whatever you got, money. You got a car, money. It takes money for anything. The Bible said money answers all things, but interpret that. that. That, that interpretation of money answers all things. That is talking about in the earth. That's Glory right. Glory to God. That's Glory right. to God. Clear. Money answers all things in the earth. Okay? It answers all things in the earth. The Bible said, for the love of it is the, the root of all evil. The, the love word. of it, not having a lot of it. 
Not being a millionaire is evil. Not being a billionaire is evil. Not having five billion is evil. It's not evil to be rich. It's not evil to be prosperous. It's not evil to be prosperous. The Bible don't tell you that. The Bible said for the love of it, for the agape of money is the root of all evil. But everybody will stop right there. Go with the finish of that verse. For after which while some error from the faith. Yeah. Piercing themselves through with many sorrow. Don't stop with the, the love of money through the law. Even not. I don't bang my head with that. Finish why Paul said it. He said, for the love of it is the root of all evil. After which while some error from the faith. Piercing themselves through with many sorrow. That's why the scripture was quoted. It wasn't quoted to beat you up or having prosperity. Because Paul wasn't a broke man. Lord. Paul had money. Peter had money. Bartholomew was wealthy. Matthew was wealthy. Yes. Do you know your history? Mark was healthy. And Luke was too. In Luke the third chapter, there were three women that helped Jesus. They were financially rich. They was princesses and, and they was connected to kings. They was prosperous. So don't get that. And then Jesus told Peter... Glory to God, when it was questioning Jesus' identity and if Jesus paid taxes, he said, Peter, take the skill that you got that I called you from. And he said, and the first fish you catch. Notice now, notice now, the Jew is not permitted to eat any and everything. He said, the first thing you catch, he didn't tell him, he didn't tell him what type. He said, open its mouth and there's a coin in its mouth and take that and pay yours and my taxes. Now look at what he did. Glory to God. He said, I'm going to take your occupation that you had and I'm going to use your occupation to bring you out of. See, fishing was Peter's occupation. So he said, yes. take what you know. Go down there. Get the first thing you can. Open up this mouth. Look at the prophet in him. Open this mouth and pay them to, to quiet the nature. So it's not about you having. God wants you to have it. I need you to be wealthy. God needs you to be rich. He needs you. Now, how can God be against wealth? Glory to God, when, when Solomon was the richest man that ever lived. Somebody talking about Jeff Baker, one of his name is, got two, got $200 billion. See what they don't know. Glory to God. I laugh and talk because the Bible came, the, Solomon had $200 billion back here 3,000 years ago. Now you don't go and do the math. Take 200 billion back 3,000 years ago and bring it up to now. Now you tell me who's the richest man that ever lived. Don't do me. Lord, the, the throne Solomon set on was worth $600 million. Yes. This is the throne he set on. Man, come on, study your Bible a little bit. Lord, the soul, prosperity is of our portion. Street pigs would go, see cities of pearl and things that you have never known. Glory yes. to yes. God. You've never known the thing that God got for us. So don't get it twisted. My Even though God. you might be twisted and hurt by what hurt you. Repent. Forgive them so God can bless you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. God yes. bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And I trust that this teaching has blessed you and helped you and carry you on. Glory to God again. As the year go on, every so often I will slip something in yeah. to keep you informed and encouraged on giving because at the ultimate, God wants you to give yourself. Yeah. Everything else can pass away, but your soul is the most important thing. My God. And if you're there today and you need to be saved, come on, pray. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Save me, Lord God, but don't stop right there. You got to get filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name so that you can have the power to be able to carry on the, the mission of your confession. You can confess it easy, but you need power to carry on that confession. I love you. PG, give. It's time to give. Yeah. It's time to sow. You should see means of sowing. You should see cash app. Glory to God. How to give to the cash app. You should see means how to sow into your pastor Sherry's life. You should see means how to sow into my life. Also, you can do a PayPal uh, online, and also you can mail your gifts in. I pray that somebody that's not a member of our church, I pray today.
that somebody that don't I don't even know, I've never shook your hand. I wish you were so into our ministry so that God can so God can give you a miracle. I wish you were so into our ministry. Yes, yes, yes I yes, do. Yes. I want somebody that don't even belong, don't even know, but hearing this word, know the truth, the truth shall make you free. I wish you were so so God can show you about the miracle grounds that you're sowing into. So he can miraculously bless your name. So you can go tell somebody that I know where I can sow a seed and God will bless you that in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you. Make sure you tune in this Sunday. Praise God. If I'm, if you see my face this Sunday, you know I'm starting that special teaching and that special preaching. But if you see that lovely face, as my wife, Pastor Sherry, you know you're going to be inspired by the things of God. But for sure, next Wednesday, we're definitely going to teach you a lesson that's going to bless you for years to come. Love yes, you, Pastor love Sherry. You. Close us out. God bless you all. Grace and peace. I love you. I just want you all to remain encouraged. Um, and that was such an awesome word Apostle brought forth on tonight. And so I pray that you take heed to it. And just go forth and be obedient to the word and begin to step out on faith and trust again. Uh, forgive, get rid of your bitterness if you have bitterness. Um, and just release and trust God when you release your money. Hallelujah. Because he's the one that said give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, together, running over. Men shall give into your bosom. I love you. And let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank, thank and you, praise Father. you for each and every individual that tuned in tonight. Father, I thank you for knowing that your word is real. And I thank you, Father, as they step out on the word of God to obey it on tonight, that you will begin to show them that you are real. Hallelujah. That you're faithful to your word because it's your word, not because it's not because of what man says but because you're faithful to yourself. And I thank you, Father, for awakening their faith and belief up once again, like never before. Bless them. Keep them safe. Keep them from COVID. Keep them from hunger. Yes. In Jesus' name. Keep them from sickness, Father, yes. of any kind right now. Thank you for touching their bodies. Thank touching you. their mental state. Yes. Letting them know that you're just a Ooh, prayer God, away and that you yes. will answer if they call upon you. In the name and of I Jesus. thank you now for regulating minds, granting rest, granting peace, granting strength in uh, Jesus' most gracious yes. and holy name. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. We love you. God bless you. God bless you. Be blessed.